come here. Welcome to the famous Foxes Aftermath show, live every Sunday on Leicester Fan TV. Come on, you foxes. <laughs> Good morning, Foxes. How the devil are you today? How's your weekend been so far? How's your Good Friday? Was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Well, you know what day it is. It's Sunday. It's 10 a.m. So it's time for the famous Foxes Aftermath show run by us fans, for you fans out there. And you know what? Your opinion really, really matters today. So get them comments in. Let's get going. It's kickoff time. Come on, you foxes. The Leicester City Machine is on the march again. Leicester Fun TV presents a variety of content like fan discussions, match analysis, and engaging with Leicester fans worldwide. We want your views live. Thanks to our sponsors, Everot, Bolo Blinds, Pucker Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Co, and the Fox's Arms and Rainbows. We are live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Morning all, how the devil are you? I hope you're well, I hope you're good. I'm going to start with a little bit of a rant to start start to start off with. Instead of leaving it to the very end, I'm going to start right at the very beginning so you can all hear me. Right, you cannot defend in any way a team and a manager who have given up a 17-point lead at the top in the last two and a half months. You really can't. The players are paid a fortune every week and the fans deserve a better performance. And it's a million miles away from what we actually want. That was rubbish yesterday, uh, sorry, Friday. Watch Leeds and Ipswich play. High tempo, aggressive football, and it's baffling. How can we be so lethargic right from the very start? It's pretty damn simple. We have never really been a top of the league quality team all season long. Take them blue tinted glasses off and see it what it is for. We have not got the quality to take us up, unfortunately. Might be different. People might think different views, but that's my views at the minute. That is my view and my view only. Um, morning, Jamie. Absolutely bocklers is what we are. Is Cody ever going to get a game? I don't know why is Cody not playing. Just going through some of the comments. I didn't see them all while I was uh, reading that. I did write that down, by the way. Um, in no way, Warner met him at Torquay. He's staying in Plymouth where he lives. Um, morning, Jamie. Forget Jesus. Our promotion push needs. <laughs> I'm not quite sure we all want that kind of thing. Um, Scotty, yes, morning, morning, everyone. Well, right, I'm going to get really in. There's been, I'm struggling to stay positive. Oh, let's, where's that one gone? Sorry, I've just lost that comment. That was a decent comment there. Here we go. PWF, not who, should, sorry, PFW. I'm struggling to stay positive now. I have been waiting all season for this Enzo ball to work perfectly, but it's always a bit of a hit and miss. Yes, always has been a bit of a hit of a miss. Um, you can't say play two up front. Because you get called dinosaurs and living in the old age, living in the ice age, living in the past. Teams don't play with that. We want it. We can see it. But teams don't play with that. You get called dinosaurs by other fans, by the blue tinted glasses wearers, which really annoys me, that does. Really annoys me. We want a plan B. We stick with plan A and stick with plan A. And when plan A isn't working, we still stick with plan A. Doesn't work. On a lighter note, I'm going to bring Reedy in on that. Morning, Reedy. How are you, pal? I'm good. How are you? Uh, morning, uh, let's. Uh, morning, Andy. How are you? Monday has to be four, 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 fucking two. Monday has to be. It actually has to be, but it won't be though, will it? No, of course not. LCFC Fox says our nil nil down tempo, no passion, no urgency, no commitment. I think it is. Um, Rudkin 
Uh, Ivan, hello, Ivan. I haven't seen you for a long time. Time to go, Rudkin and Wheeling. The team spirit has evaporated. Neil Birchinoff has said, yes, it has. Uh, Enzo, Facebook's user has. I wondered how long it'll take. Enzo's fault for missing them. Four chances. Vardy did. Oh, before you jump on me, I'm not slagging off Vardy. But whoever that Facebook user is, I'm oh, sorry, I can't see your name because it doesn't come up on StreamYard. If that had been Dakar, you'd have been jumping on his throat straight away. Why can't we slag? Just because he scored 185 goals doesn't mean he's got credit in the bank. It's what happens now. It, really what happens now. Uh, not allowed to boo players. We'll talk about that now. Reedy, at the end of the game, you were there. You and Tom were there. Hopefully, Tom might join us in a bit. What happened? What happened? The moment, the, the, moment, the moment that final whistle blew, the amount of booze was absolutely crazy. It was the most toxic environment I've ever been in. Um, obviously, for the last couple of years, even even when we got relegated, it wasn't as bad. Um, and, yeah, just... It, it, from from what we've spoken said that it, it's different live to being on t watching it on tv it was no, really, it, was, shit. it, was, it shit. was no but it was absolutely different people say we deserve to win with the chance oh. we with the chances we had and all that and like but even if we won one or two or three nil i'd still say we were lucky because we were absolutely woeful on friday we we again we had chances we missed completely um Vardy misses absolute sitter, which was just ridiculous. Anywhere else in that net, and it goes in. Um, and, and yeah, it, it, it just wasn't good at all. The sloppiness of passes. I, I said at the game that I, I honestly thought it was like a team that have never played together before. That That's how it felt. Not one right. player felt like they were playing together. Mark Charles, I've got to answer this. Two months ago, Enzo was the best thing ever playing the Enzo way. Now you all hate him in the championship. Every team can beat anyone, why do we think we should win every game? I personally, since the very beginning, Mark, and you can go back on the videos, I have not been behind Enzo and his style of play from the very beginning. So I have not ever said, I've said yes, playing the Enzo way, yes, I agree with that, I have said that. But I have never, ever said what you're saying. That I've the... never liked the style of play. So you can take that comment back, because I have never said he's the best thing since sliced bread. That is 100% certain. And I'll stick by that and I'll even show you every video you want me. There'll be not one of me saying he is the best thing since sliced bread. I do not like the style of football. I like us being top of the league, but blowing a 17-point lead in two and a half months is on him by the way we're playing and the style of football we are playing. The the issue is, for me, it's not the about... For me, it's not really the system... It's about reacting to what's happened and the players, it feels like, I feel like the pressure's really getting to us now. Like I say, if we, if we didn't have any pressure, we would have won that game against Bristol easily. We would have, we would have won that game easily if we didn't have any pressure on us. Um, and again, it, it, it's like, it's taking, it's taking reaction to when you're, you're, you're losing 1-0. You put, you, you change it up. Don't. Don't just do the same and put Kel on for Vardy. Like we 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 all asked for subs before they scored, but it was a, it was basically written on a piece of paper. When they score, we'll ping someone on. Because yeah. it, it wasn't going to happen before, was it? No, no, it wasn't. Uh, Tom, are you, have you stopped doing being a bit of a grass leveling technician this morning to come on the show? Oh, I've just tidied the garage out, and then I thought I pop back on for five minutes before I cut the grass. Bit of a tea break, pal. Bit of a tea break. Right, really, just you were there as well. You're right behind the goal, so you probably had a good view of everything where you were. Um, really's just been on about what was happening in the crowd. He said it was rather toxic throughout the game and towards the end of the game. What did you think? And there's, I don't know whether you've heard this. There's a rumour on Twitter, so it must be true. There was a bit of Leicester player on player in the tunnel after the game. I haven't seen the Leicester player on player in the tunnel after the game. All, all I can say is that after the game was toxic, definitely. JJ, I give full respect for walking across the whole of the front of the uh, away end, clapping them. Didn't turn and shy away. You know, some of the players were a bit taken back, I think, by the chance of what the effing hell was that. Uh, and I think a few of the players that looked to them like, we're third in the league and you're singing that. Like, wow. Uh, but understand the fans' frustration. It was another poor performance. 
uh, another poor performance from the manager on the tactical front for me. You know, I think we all could see at half time we were missing a swing in midfield. Uh, and Matty James was overrunning us. That says it all. Yeah. Uh, and then the second half was, you know, obviously the two chances for Vardy. Credit in the bank or not, that he has to score them for me. I don't care how old you are. Jamie Watt even scored those ones. Uh, oh. but, you know, I just not think... Not quite sure that one, pal. <laughs> I just think the second half, you could all, we could all feel and we could all sense where it was going. You could read the game. They were on top of us. They were getting in control of the midfield. They were overlapping us down the wings. And if you look where the goal comes from, our midfield has gone out of the place. There's nothing there. Uh, Chowdhury doesn't close him. You could, and he wasn't doing that most of the game. wasn't closing down quick enough when they were getting the shots away. And you could just need freshen up. And yeah, if you're going to do light for light, I, I understand that. But it's too late by the point the goal goes in. That's the biggest problem. The goal's gone in, and then we're we're reacting instead of being proactive. And I think that was the biggest frustration why the fans reacted at the end how they did because it didn't feel like we were there to win the game. In my view, it didn't just feel like it. There was there was no tempo. The the passing is too slow at the moment. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth there, Tom. Proactive instead of reactive. We should have been more proactive. I mean, Kel was on the... You would probably want to have seen this, but just before they scored, Kel was stripped, ready to change. And we, and he made a like-for-like -like substitution. I mean, they scored in, what, the 73rd minute? So even then, that was a late substitution. But you've got to be more proactive. And being proactive is trying to change the game. Harvey Barnes, I know Harvey Barnes, is. he came on last night for Newcastle, scored two subs. That's changing the game. They, he came on and changed the games. Who put the ball across for Bristol? One of their subs. I can't remember which one it was. But one of their subs, a fresh pair of legs, changes the games. Like for like, doesn't work for in my reckoning, reading. The, the, problem, the problem is, as well, majority of the first half, we, we saw someone like Mavadidi being an absolute stinker. And obviously, Tom mentioned to me about him having three players on him all the time. So, you can't really do too much about it. But then... If you if he's been having a stinker for the last five or six games or even more than that, if Enzo is right in saying what he does in the press conference, saying no one's on his, on their game, they get dropped. Why is he not getting dropped? Like he should have been he should have been taken off before half time, and he lasted the full ninety minutes. You've got other players like say you got Chowdhury who I wouldn't have said had the worst game because I thought he did what he could to fight for the ball and whatnot. But then you'd say. It's not all about fighting for the ball. It's about the quality as well, which obviously Ricardo is going to be a lot better. But even when he came on, he was making sloppy passes all over the place. So it nothing was nothing was good uh, on Friday. And if I'm totally honest, I I I can't see what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I really can't. What Phil's just said, uh, one nil down with ten to go, and the manager has to do something. Ninety first minute free kick in their half, and we pass it around and lose the ball. Put it in the box. What is wrong with putting it in the box? What is wrong with throwing the kitchen sink at them? A lot of clubs now throw... It's, it seems to have gone out of fashion. You and me, Tom, a bit of dinosaurs. We're still a little bit old age, older than Reedy, that's for certain. But you look at Leeds. Leeds don't put, mess about with it at the back. They go for it. They throw the, look at the game against Watford. Friday, uh, yeah, Friday night. They threw the kitchen sink at them. They went for it and scored. And what do we do? We sit back. And we carry on playing like we're winning 5-0 and we're losing 1-0. There's no urgency, no fight, no spirit. This Somebody put it on earlier. This is like Brendan Ball 2.0. It's exactly the same. And I, I got to shreds early in the season and said, oh, this is no different from Brendan, from Brendan Ball. It's exactly the bloody same at the minute, Tom. No idea. I, I understand what you're saying when you say the same. There is a difference. I can see the difference. But I understand when you say when we're nine to first minutes. For me, when you've got someone the size of Vestergaard at the back, why are we not just putting, putting that ball in the box? Because let's not get it wrong. This is a Bristol City team who are not going to go down, not going to go up. They're sitting mid-table. have got one of the worst home records in the division this season. You know, uh, why are we not challenging our goalkeeper? Vestergaard, go and stand on the goal. It's 91 minutes. Go and stand on their goalkeeper. Just be a pest. You've got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? But no, we didn't. We took the shot off. And that's where the fans are getting angry because mm. any other manager, you're putting that in the box. I don't care what any other team in this division, that ball is going one place in the mixer. We had five minutes of injury time on 91. Why are we trying to take it short again? That has sort of been the problem against Middlesbrough. It was the problem against QPR home where we're not winning games and things have started to turn. You want to see something happen. 
and we can't see it happening in the passing game, so we've got to change it and get it in the box quicker. For me, it though, just, it just shows you. It just shows you though that we had a. I think we had a goal kick in the 91st or 92nd minute, and he passed it to Faze. I'm like, just get the bloody ball up. You, you've got to get up there. Don't try and pass it to Faze to make a move. Like that. That's what got me. It's like, don't get me wrong. I don't mind the passing game, majority of the game, because it does somehow create you a lot of chances. But in the last two or three minutes, you're not going to get one good chance out of passing from the back, are you? I mean, like Ivan's just said. This style only works if you have the players to do it. We're trying to be a top six club who can play this style. I love Ipswich, and he says he loves Ipswich style of play. He's a great manager too. Well, my thing is, good managers find solutions to problems when things are not going to plan. And I'm yet to see that from Enzo. I am really yet. He sticks with his tippy, tappy, slow football when we're losing. Something has to give. Something, it, something has to give. Tom, tell me when we're <laughs> Meaningful goal in the last few minutes of a game, apart from the West Brom one. Oh, when you we just killed me then, haven't you? <laughs> you killed me there by saying that. <laughs> Look, you can't say it hasn't worked because it obviously has worked. We won 25 games, and before Christmas, we were sort of taking teams apart. The difference we've been after Christmas, in my view, is one, we've been too open at the back. A massive problem for me, what I've seen the difference is before Christmas, we weren't open, we weren't giving teams chances. This time round, if you look at Middlesbrough uh, and you look at the QPR, very similar goals. Ball, ball down that right-hand channel or the left-back channel across the goal and the tapping. There's two goals very similar in those games. And then if you look at it from our point of view, is we're not taking our chances. That's the biggest problem for me. We are not. It's not a case of we're not creating things. We are. But if Vardy's going to miss a hat-trick at Bristol City, uh, Middlesbrough at home, we missed a hat full of chances in the last 15 minutes. Vardy, Vestergaard, Vardy again. The chances are there. It's not a case that we're not creating stuff. And I won't, I'm not going to say that we're playing the worst football I've seen in this my lifetime. But at the moment, it is not clicking. For me, the biggest problem, I said it earlier, is the passing is too slow to open teams up now. They've worked out to defend against us. And if we do get the chance, you've got to take them because in this league, you're not going to get as many chances as you think. No, no. Um, Neil, but respect the help, yeah. Even, even worse, if we go to the Premier League, Tom, we'll get very few chances. Uh, Neil Burcham says, Ipswich have a far worse squad than us, but every player gives 100% and they play as a team. Attack with attack with space and shoot from anywhere. That's one of my big problems. We don't, don't seem to want to attack enough and we definitely don't want to have a pop on goal. What happens, Reedy? You get it... In, Old school. I'm talking old school now. You have a pop. You get a chance of a deflection. You get a chance of a, a rebound. Comes off the post. You first onto it. You put the second ball in the back of the net. We don't do that. We take too many passes on the edge of the box. What happens? We're swinging the ball in from the corners. Going to the sorry, on the wings. Going down the byline. Crossing it over. Deflection. Rebound. Bit of a knockdown from someone. What happens? We don't want to do that. We're trying to play Ajax, total football. And we haven't got the players for it, Tom, have we, Reading? It, 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 it it's Enzo's style of play, mate. We're not going to move from it. And that, that maybe is the big problem. I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not a, I'm not an Enzo out f fan yet, but... What would have what would all I'm going to say is would we be in the same position or top of the league if we had um, Scott Parker in? I'm not. We. I don't. It, there's no. There's no reason to say we can't or we wouldn't be. But it's a different style of play. We we chose a style of play which is more possession based, keeping the ball, making sure we create chances, and not letting them have any chance on the ball, um, and then create the create the chances. We had about six or seven good chances just on Friday to to score, and we did not. We missed what not. We missed all of them, and that for me is down to pressure. If if yeah. you if you won three or four games before that game, we would have slapped them three or four nil on Friday. It's confidence reading, and it is. I think not scoring them goals doesn't give the defence confidence because we've got a bit of a shaky defence, haven't we, Tom? We we concede goals, not scoring them gate, not scoring them goals puts pressure on the defence, and I think that, no. that doesn't help. No, of course it does, and at the moment we're we're conceding goals for fun. That's what I said earlier. You know, before Christmas, it was easy. It was. We're 17 points clear. It was easy. You know, defensively, we weren't conceding. We had the best defensive record in all four divisions. That says it all. For me, we've had a bit of a jot wobble. And for some reason, defence is now having a massive wobble because their confidence is shot. 
Uh, I've, I'm me for tomorrow. I want to see Cody in that lineup. I want to see all Brighton in that lineup. Get some experience in around the boys who need it. And for me at the moment, we need some experience in that team. Because at the moment, if we don't change it tomorrow against that game and we go a goal behind, the King Power is going to be toxic tomorrow. I'm going to say that now. If we go a goal behind early on, that ground is going to be absolutely toxic mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Mark Watson. Where's that comment gone there? Mark Watson. Where's it gone? Oh, here we go. Dakar's miss against it against Leeds. Massive. That would have made. I know we had a disallowed goal, which wasn't a disallowed goal, but that miss when we when we were still one 0 would have been two 0 and it would be a different kettle of fish. I know it's all ifs and buts, but it's true though. And I've been saying this for months and months and months. If you don't take your chances, well, you he did take a chance, it. didn't he? He did take a chance and he scored it's it. Going to cost he us. Didn't, and didn't people were saying to me back in November, December time, even. October, November, December, when I was saying it. Oh, but we're top of the league. We're top scorers. I says, yeah, but it'll cost us. It will, And it has come back and bit us on the arse, Tom. And it has cost us big time. I think, I think you have to look at our rivals who went out and did some very good business as well. You know, they obviously lost George Hurst, Ipswich, to, in the game versus us. They went out and got a very proven good strike in this evening in Kiefer Moore. They didn't look around. They didn't go, oh, well, we're going to struggle. Look, they well, there's your plan B, isn't it? You know what I mean, though? But Stick your bloody ball in the box and he'll win the header. But you've got to look at Kiefer Moore and Hurst. They're very similar. Link-up play. Like to move the ball around. Play the ball into his feet and go into a turn and get into the box. We haven't got that at the moment. We haven't got someone who wants to be the link-up play. Vardy isn't a link-up play. I'm sorry. He does it best he can, but he isn't the link-up play. You know, uh, Nacho can probably the best one. You've got to do that role. Dak is too light. And Tom Cannon, for some reason, okay, he's injured for the tomorrow. Can't get a game. But from what I've seen of Tom Cannon... He's probably the best one to suit the system we're trying to play. We're playing the balls into his feet because he's got to think about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Mark King said, the Chef Wednesday game, I've mentioned it many a time, when we considered that last-minute equaliser because they threw the kitchen sink at us and people were still, even then, people were going, oh, oh is this the, was this the away game? Yes. Yeah, 1-1. Yeah, it's just where the act could have had about three goals up before even half-time. Yeah, yeah. I remember. and people were going, and I was going... Yeah, but look, and people now we're top of the league. And I was saying to people then, take your blue tinted glasses off, and we, these will cost us. And it has cost us. And I, I, I hate this saying, I told you so, but it has cost us. It really has, Tom. All these missed chances, people keep saying about, oh, well, we're not playing on the PlayStation. It's not FIFA, it's not FIFA 2030. It's, it's now and then. And if you don't take your chances, I know we're not going to win every game. But. Oh, I I think the two games for me what really hurt us were the two Ipswich games. Conceding two goals in the 91st and whatever, 96th minute of those games, they were big nails into coffins mm -hmm. for us for like not coming back and not killing games off. Because in other games, those two games alone, we had enough chances. OK, the referee should have given a penalty on the one at Portman Road for that challenge on KDH. But we had enough chances in each of those games to kill them off. You take those two points off the Ipswich, you give us another four points, the league table looks a bit lot different now, doesn't it, really? For me, those two games were crucial, along with mm -hmm. the Leeds game, for my, why, why where we are now, because we didn't do what we should have done in those games. And if you Instead want of two up, points, you would have had, yeah. what, nine? Yeah. Well, you, well, yeah, nine points. You, you're yeah. in a completely different position. Those three games were crucial to our season. And for me, one of the most stupid comments was in Matt Gaffer coming out and saying, it's just another game for us. It's a bigger game for them. You gave the team talk to them before they even started the game for Leeds to come at Cummins. Talking of the Gaffer's team talk, did you hear his post-match interview on Radio Leicester after the game? Well, it was on When You're Smiling podcast. Um, Owen Palmerkins asked him, "What problems did they? What other problems did they uh, cause you?" Oh, I don't know. I've got to review the tape first. Oh, sorry, you've been watching the game for ninety minutes. Surely a good manager will be able to spot the problems like that and change and change something. I'm sorry, coming out of the problem <laughs> like that, it's, and then then he says as well, oh, what about going on uh, the next few games? Oh, we need to get a win. Of course we need to get a win. We've been needing to get a win. Some of his comments, I don't know, uh, are Brendan-esque. Not quite throwing the players under the bus, but coming out with what he said, I need to review the tapes to find out what problems are caused us. He's got a management team and him. Watching that game for 90 minutes. He should be able to sort it out there and then. Thing is, people have been saying to us about, 
oh, um, we're, we're not even at 100% yet and how we're playing and whatnot. I feel like we've gone overboard and we've gone to a po- point where we're, we're trying too hard and it's not working at all. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think I, I said to Tom, it's like, it's not even like, it's like we've not even been playing together this whole season. Also, the first game we played said, and we've, no one can make a good pass to each other. Chris said this, uh, Chris is reminding me, he also said he was pleased with the way we played. He said KDH, Winks, Batua, Mavididi and Wilf all had good games and all played well. That's why he didn't make any subs because they were playing well. I'm sorry. What game was he watching? All of them were shit. Doosby Hall gave lost possession 25 times in that game. Yeah, man. 25 times. He said he didn't take him off because he had a good game. What game was he watching? I'm sorry. Someone, Mark Watson there just said Fatu was terrible. I thought he was one that actually at least tried in, the way, in ways to I try and do something. I thought we got the ball to him enough. No, said, we, got, uh, we, got, we got the ball to Mabadidi who couldn't even do anything. Again, got it Ma- comes... Go on, Tom. Go on, Tom. I was going to say that the difference in that game for them two, for me, was you got the ball to Mavididi. They'd obviously, Bristol City had worked on this system of putting three men on him, one one in front of him, one either side, say, right, you try and take him on. You try to go around the outside or go down the inside of us. We've got it covered. When he did go down the outside, he got taken out or he got uh, he didn't get the crossing properly. We got Fatou, who was absolutely ripping Dicko apart on that uh, left-hand side. They weren't putting three men on him. They only had two men on him. They didn't see him as much of a threat. But we didn't get the ball to him. Every single time it was going to Mavadidi and you're just thinking, get it to the other side, let let Fatua run at him. Because at the moment, Fatua's got the run on his man every single time. But we didn't. We, we had to get going down that left-hand channel and give the ball to Mavadidi. So I didn't get it. I just felt half-time. He probably should have changed it then for me and brought all Brighton on and just changed it up a bit. I honestly think if you bring all Brighton on when Jamie Vardy is playing... That, or even starting, him and Vardy, they've got like this telepathetic thing. They know where each other is. And yeah, they know where the ball's going. Yes, correct, Tom. You know where the ball's going to go. Vardy will know exactly where he's going to need to be. And it's just play to your strengths. I'm sure Bristol City don't play with three at the back. And I'm sure I heard their manager after the game said, we changed our tactics. So why can't we, why do we have to keep our tactics exactly the same week in, week out and not alter our tactics against other teams. Why do we have... Everyone knows what we're like. I'm sure I heard that from the Bristol City manager after the game. Sadly, that's Enzo, though, and he's very stubborn with the way he plays and he plays the way his way and he doesn't worry about other teams as in what they're going to do until we sort it ourselves out. Worry how we play and then he'll look at them. That's what, that's how I get with Enzo. We, we play yeah. how we can play and there's a couple of times this season I've seen him change it when things haven't been going well where he's put an extra mid- midfielder in there, where he's pushed someone about 10 yards further forward at the park, and it's worked. And we've beaten teams from it. The last six, though, I just don't see any difference. It's just, just repeat what you're doing, lads. It will come, and I don't feel it is coming. That's the problem. Um, Andy Meadows, yes, we do need to move on from Vardy and Brighton, but it's the here and now. We need them now. I don't care. Yes, they are getting, I hate to say it, a little bit past it, and they're getting a bit old for this probably team of the way we're playing. But we need them now. I honestly think we need them now. But yes, I agree. We do need to move on from them. They are going to leave probably this winter, this summer. But we do need them now. And we need the players. I remember Enzo saying, if the players... Oh, Tom's gone. If the players don't play up to... If they don't perform, he will drop them. What's he done, Mabadibi? He's had one... He scored one goal... That was an FA Cup goal. So he's had no, nothing, no assists, no goals, contributions since the Huddersfield game on New Year's Day. But he still keeps playing him. Yes, I was going to put that up in a minute. Is he the new Damari Gray? He could well be. Tom, and I've seen your team for um, Monday. We're going to move off Monday on Friday now because I've had enough. We're going to go on to tomorrow's game. I've seen your team. You've made a couple of interesting changes. I don't. I agree with you on Vardy. I don't think he will start. Not because he missed three chances. I just don't think he can play three games in three days. Um, or Brighton and Cody are in there. And Doyle. Oh yeah, well he couldn't play. He couldn't play because yeah. um, the red card. Yeah, I, I, I just think you've got to get some experience in around that team now. When things aren't going right, you saw it having a lot of kids on the pitch. But if it's not going well, you need some experience to try and turn this round and turn it around quickly with eight games to go. 
for me, that's why I went with uh, Madsen Goal. He hasn't done anything wrong. But then I went with Cody, Vestergaard and uh, Doyle in that back three. Obviously, Ricky P and Winks back to their partnership because for me, when they're on form, they're, 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 they're the two who make this team tick in my head. You know, without them two, the team doesn't tick. And I think we saw that at Bristol City. For me, he didn't change it quick enough. Uh, obviously, then I've gone KDH and Wilf because, again, I think Wilf in, in the team is vital from getting back and helping them stop the attacks, but also creating attacks. Uh, I've put Fatui on the left and then I've put All Brighton on the right with Vardy up top. So again, Vardy was just, we know what Vardy can do. And that's with our, if we're putting All Brighton in that team, sort of keeping Vardy's there in my head. Will he play? I don't know. I could possibly see Daka coming back in tomorrow because uh, Vardy <coughs> can't play two games in a week. Yeah, uh, McAtee and Craig, unfortunately, still injured. Um, Reedy, what do you think, pal? To, for tomorrow, are you looking forward to it, or are you a little bit, a little bit nervous? Sound, sound. I'll do one. Um, yes, I, I agree with Tom's team completely. Other than the striker, um, I don't think Vardy will play in two games in three days. If I'm totally honest, I think it will be Daka. Um, yeah, but that's what Tom said it will be Daka. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think it will be. Um, but again, tomorrow, I honestly, at the moment, I can't see a win. Like, I can't. And we we haven't got we haven't got any momentum. We haven't got any sort of bounce to try and do it. We've not got any manager bounce to try and win games. It, there's nothing there for us to say that we should be winning tomorrow, other than the past se- the past games this season. Um, but with the form we're in, we've got to p- pick something out of someone's arse or something I mean, to, no, to make us do something. the third best team in form over the last ten or twelve games. I think it was. I think Phil did it with you yesterday, uh, Friday. I don't know when he did it. Mm. I'm, oh, it was relaxed when it on Friday. It's straight after the game. I'm sure they were the third best team on form in the last 10 or 12 games, Tom. It's going to be difficult. It's it's 100% squeaky bum time now, isn't it? Um, I'm still going to each game hoping that we're going to turn around now. The season's we've come so far this season not to just chuck it all away and think, right, we're in the playoffs now. Just Let's just aim to get out through that route because we all know that the lottery of the playoffs is not the way we want to be going if we want to get this league. I think me and Jamie have seen enough uh, Wembley finals in the 90s to not want to go down the Swindon uh, the, and, you know, Blackburn, Blackburn games again. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are guaranteed playoffs, aren't we? No, we're not. No, if we lose every game and Cov won every game, we'd be out of the playoffs. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's like... No, you know, Tom, that's, that's, that's a fact. You no. asked Tom a question, Reedy. Really. It's I'm more than likely. Top. It's more than likely that we are in the playoffs if we don't get top two, though. No, you just said you can't see his winning game. No, but I'm saying it's more than likely. Like, if okay, if Coventry lose one more game, it yeah. means we're guaranteed playoffs. Yes. Yeah. So it's near and enough. Ninety-five percent playoffs. Just some, just some dates for your diaries. May the twelfth and sixteenth is a third and fourth semi-final. Thirteenth uh, and seventeenth of May is the fourth and fifth semi-finals, and the final. Is the 26 at the minute? But that all depends on whether Coventry get in the playoffs and get to the FA Cup final. Which I can't see them doing that. But... Well, how do you know? Well, no, actually, you know, the, way the, yeah, nice. the way they played Manu yesterday, fucking Christ, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were awful. They were awful last night. Brentford, I think Brentford had 80, I think the record was 87 touches in the opponent's box. Mm. They had 85 touches. They're playing Man U. They're not just playing little old Burnley or Sheffield United. They played Man United, who are meant to be one of the so-called top six, and had 85 touches in the opposition box. I'd be over the moon if we had 45 touches. Here's one, here's one for you, Jamie. Oh, you ready go. for this? So, tomorrow, Ipswich face Southampton, which obviously we need Southampton to win. Uh, and then Leeds play Hull, which obviously we need Hull to win. But... As you're about but, to say, but really, but so you're saying yeah, we've got to win. We shouldn't be in this situation. We were 17 no. points clear. We should not be relying on other teams to help no, us out. We, sh- we shouldn't be. No, we shouldn't be. But now it's the case. Like it, I know, but if we, we win be. all of our games, but everyone else wins all of our games, if we're we going to finish third. If we, win, if we win, do you think, Reedy? I would say I think Tom might agree with this. We need probably five wins to guarantee promotion. And seven wins to title. I would say. I, Tom, I wouldn't even say that. For the title, Tom. I'd say I it's more than that. I think well, we've it's only six, got eight games. 
I think it's six wins to go up automatically for me. And I think you've got to win the full eight if you want to win the title. Mm. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I look at everyone's talking about Hall going to Leeds. Let's just look at it's right. Hall just lost to Stoke at home. Mm. Their confidence isn't high at the moment. They're on a bit of a downer. I'm not, you know, <laughs> Southampton aren't on form at the moment either. No. They're going to Portland Road. The, the game's what we look at. And, you know, you generally felt that, that someone might do us a favour after the weekend. I mean, Southampton drew with Middlesbrough, who'd been on a, a poor, poor run of form. It, this league is so hard to call who's going to win each game now. Five tonight. home games out of the last eight. Yep. Even that should be the big been, part. That should be the big part. We're being a bit neg- I know we're all being negative a little bit. Well, me in particular. Tom, not so much. Tom's more 60 40. Reed is about 50 50. And I'm definitely being too negative. I think we need to get the home form sorted and get behind them. We really do. I know this sounds a bit, from me, been a bit. I don't know what the word, I can't think, two-faced. But we need to get behind them. At the games, we need to get behind them for these five games. Yes, I wanted to go up. I don't care how we go up. I wanted the title, but I don't care how we wanted to go up now. But even if you get 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 to play off win? We've got to win our games. Forget what's happened with everything else and win our games. So you'd take playoffs? No. No, I wouldn't take playoffs. You just said you don't care how you go up as long as you go up. Yeah, but I was talking title. (laughs) I think... I don't I want the lottery, me, like Tom says. I don't want the lottery of playoffs. I, th- I think for me on this is it's not. I'm not negative because I've been positive all season. I think from the tweets have all said that I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. I've been positive trying to back the team, and Jamie would have seen those tweets. I think for me the concern is the next four of the games we have to win. Mm-hmm. Norwich, a point you would have taken that before the weekend, but obviously because of the loss, we're now the, it's got to be three. I'm but sorry, then after yeah. that, the three games against Millwall, them three, them three, and three should be. Bankers. If we don't get nine points on those three, Kiss can like to go up automatically, in my view, because the other teams will go on and win their games around us. I think the weekend we play Birmingham could be the crucial weekend because we're at home to Birmingham, uh, Coventry at home to Leeds, and then Ipswich are at home to someone tough as well. Mm-hmm. That could be the weekend where it all makes or breaks it this season for me because by that point, you've already you've played... Millwall, uh, then we've got Millwall and Plymouth away. So you've got to win those three games for me. Nine points is the only option out of those three anyway. Mm-hmm. And that would be even better if we can get a win tomorrow and it would start the bounce back for it. But again, no, I, I, at the moment, I can't see us doing anything against Norwich. Ipswich, you've got Norwich next week, Tom. That's it. That's the dog. That's the weekend because Ipswich, Norwich, Cov, Leeds, Leicester, Birmingham. And that's the weekend. Bloody it hell. Could, be, it could all change around for me on that week, Saturday, like when we're at home to Birmingham. If you get a win and then hope that Cov can do us a favour and the, the, the mighty Canaries can go and stuff the tractors, that could be a weekend that really turns it round mm. because then obviously we've still got a game in hand against the Southampton team that I wouldn't rave about them. We've seen them play well when they can, but they're not on a great run of form at the moment. No, the old carrot crunching derby. The old carrot crunching derby. Right, before we go, we've, I think we've taught the hind legs off a donkey about the Bristol City game. Tomorrow, really... Come on, pal. Be positive. What do you think tomorrow? Um, is, is, is a draw being positive? Not, um, two months ago, <laughs> probably yes. It's like, if I'm totally honest, I, 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 I want us to win. Of course I do. But the way they're playing, they're what? I'd say the third informed table. So it, it, it's, it's such a hard game to predict. And I want us to win, but I honestly think it'll be a two-all draw. I'm totally, totally honest. The first two to put the scores in have gone for three one, three one. GPM Moore has gone for two a lick. Sorry, that's Leon. Two all. He's agreed with you for once really. Someone agreeing with you. Uh Graham Moore's put a two one. Callum Barnes has gone for three one. Ooh, I think that's a three one Norwich. Ivan Gibbs has gone for where's that one? I think he said smash. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot. Tom, what are you thinking? A lot sort of very in between scores here, Tom. I'm positive, mate. I, I just think it's got to turn at some point. We've had a mini blip. Everyone has a mini blip in the season. I said it would come at some point for us. We were never going to go and walk the league like everyone thought we would. I still thought we'd be at least six, seven points going into the last eight games. I didn't think we'd drop off the way we have. Uh, I think we'll win 3-1 tomorrow. I think it's about time that some of these chances start hitting the net. Uh, and uh, I think KDH will hopefully start bouncing back. We saw he can do it. The performance at Chelsea away, he was... Second to number, he was the best player on the park. 
So I'd have KDH to score uh, and Dak to maybe get a brace. <laughs> the, Leeds fans, the Leeds fans just asked a question. At this moment in time, do you think we'll make top two? Yes or no? That's all I want. Yes or no? No. Yes. Tom? Ooh, 50-50. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go yes, because I want to say end on a bit of positivity. So you're out. You've, really, you've lost that one. Uh, Facebook users gone yes. Callum says no. Chris, yes. Leon, yes. So there's still positivity. They still, they still want us to go up. I know we all want us to go up, but it's just I think it's just all in our heads, isn't it, Tom? We've been in just... these situations. This is the Leicester way, isn't it? No easy way. I think for me, it's because I know how crucial going up this season is because mm -hmm. I was around when the club went into administration the last time and I saw how financially we were cr crippled and how long it took us to get back. Sadly, this could be the same problem if we don't go up this year. And the motivation should be there for the players. One, to put two fingers up to the Premier League and the FL to you know fight for the little clubs and the smaller clubs to get back to where they should be. Uh, but also to say, we're not going to get bullied and we're going to go back to the Premier League and we'll take the six-point deduction before we start. Use it as, I don't know what they need to do. Use it as momentum. Use it as a, a, a wake-up call. But That's what I thought yesterday, uh, sorry, Friday might be. After the weeks, the two weeks we've had of International Week of what's happened, the Premier League, the EFL, even the sacking of the WSL manager, Willie Kerr. It, we needed something to give us a boost. The play, I thought the players might get behind us and give us a boost for the fans to have something to be positive about. But it's just gone down in a... No, when we, when, when we were first got... When we, all the fans were first there and the, the whistle blew for kick-off, we were loud. We were, we were supporting them. We did all we could. But if, as the game was going through and get, going to the later stages, we could tell how bad it was going. And we could tell that it, their goal was coming at some point. So we just had to make sure we'd scored them. We just didn't do it. So, again, we always try and support them. We, we're not saying we never... We're not going to just sit there and boo them all game. But... It, for me, it all starts down to how we play on the pitch. If we have a good start to the game, we're going to support them as much as we can. But if it if it starts turning bad, then it's it's hard to it is hard to support them in a way. Like you're not going to keep saying, "Oh, we're, it's going to happen. It's going to happen." If we're just still just yeah. making shit passes. Hey, yeah, Tom, here's a comment for you. Billy McKinley playing for nothing in the administration. Don't want to go back yeah. to them dark games. All he was playing uh... was defenses, wasn't it? Uh, and Nicky Summerby, weren't he, as well? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely don't want to go back to that. Right then, Tom, I'll let you game back with your grass-levelling technician job that you're doing. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that garden. That's a long garden to mow, isn't it, to grass level? Oh, just a little bit, mate. <laughs> well, well, that takes you a while. And all that blossom tree as well, I bet that's a pain in the arse. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Oh. Right then, Paul, I shall speak to you later. Take care, See you later. See you later. Be good. See you a bit. There we go. There was Tom joining us from his back garden. Oh. But yes. But yeah. So, yeah. I just don't know. Well, I really don't know. Really don't know where we're going to go from this, really, to be honest. Do you, Paul? No, well, like, like Tom says, we've got three games after tomorrow that should be bankers. And I, I agree with him. We have to be winning them the next three games after Norwich. So... Just hope that Norwich is the, is the start of a four-game winning streak, um, and then we should go on and win the most of the most of the majority of the last game. So, sure, you hope so. Yeah, top's been quiet, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Silence is deafening from the club, isn't it? At the minute, it really is. Silence is deafening. Right then, Reedy, we shall see you soon, pal. All right, no worries. I can't wait to see a back hat trick tomorrow. Yeah, just let everyone know, please subscribe to YouTube while you're on here. There's lots of you watching it. Just gives it's only two seconds, doesn't cost you anything. Just subscribe to YouTube <coughs> or whatever you're watching it on. But YouTube is probably the better for streaming wise. But yes, go and um subscribe on there. And also I think Phil's going live in the morning before the game, isn't he? I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not hundred percent yep. sure on that, but I think he's going live tomorrow morning about nine ish, ten ish, I think. But yeah, it'd be around somewhere beyond then. So that'd be a good show. Uh, Reedy, you could be involved in that tomorrow, I think, could you? Maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe. Reedy could be making a fear appearance live at Phil's house while they're eating breakfast. Mm, of course. <laughs> mate, if you're watching Phil, baking the brown sauce sandwich for him, mate, when he walks <laughs> through the door. No All worries. Right, See you in a bit. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Well, everyone, it's been much appreciated. Again, we've had fantastic viewers. I know it's early doors for everyone to get it, to get up in the morning. 
especially when the clocks go forward. At least I remember the right time. Um, but just remember, we all have opinions. Some of us are dinosaurs. Some of us are allowed to think of playing the old 4-4-2 system or a 3-3-5-2, whatever you want to call it. We can change systems. We are allowed to change systems. Just because no one plays them systems anymore doesn't mean we can't play them systems. So that's from an old dinosaur. Ciao, ciao. Adios. Goodbye. Arrivederci. There goes the final whistle. Come on, you foxes. <laughs> Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, Everards, Bolo Blinds, Pocket Pies, Pink Car Listing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Cow, The Fox's Arms, and Rainbows. Run by the fans, for the fans. Follow us on socials at Leicester Fan TV and visit LeicesterFanTV.com for all the latest news, views, and videos.